Hi, welcome to this video on Volantor aircraft. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers for a better, more sustainable world, so please do subscribe to the channel. Many of you would be fascinated by the aircraft, the bat, that featured in the movie Dark Knight Rises. There have been other types of aircraft used by the Cape Crusaders, like the bat plane in Justice League movie, while Batwing and Batcopter have featured in the comics. However, the bat is a cut above the rest. With the rotor blade system housed under the body, the bat is a type of aircraft that can be best described as a volantor. The term volantor was coined by Paul Moller, which means a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Today, the abbreviation VTOL is more commonly used to describe such aircrafts. Paul Muller has been trying to develop a flying car for almost 50 years. He has been able to develop prototypes, most notable of them is the Moller M200G, which is a flying saucer type circular aircraft with seats in the middle for two passengers. The M200G in its design is very reminiscent of the aircraft one saw in the 1970s animation, the Jetsons. This flying car utilized eight rotary Wankel engines which are less heavy but also less efficient. These engines were computer controlled, the computer regulated the speeds of the propeller based on the direction, altitude and speed. Using eight engines provided redundancy, therefore even if the aircraft were to lose one engine it would continue flying, if two engines went out the aircraft would still be able to make a survivable hard landing. The aircraft had ducted propellers which are more efficient than open propellers. As with all such type of hovering aircrafts, one of the problem is that they become less efficient when the ground effect is removed. The ground effect is a condition where the performance of a hovering aircraft increases while operating near a firm surface. The air blasted down by the fans pushes against the ground and provides a reaction force. Hovercrafts and many other ground effect vehicles make use of this phenomenon. However, the higher they fly, the less efficient they become and the more energy they consume. One of the largest ground effect vehicle ever made was the Caspian Sea Monster or simply the KM. It had a length of 92 meters and a takeoff weight of 544 tons. It has been the dream of many inventors to design a low energy aircraft that can at least fly over smaller obstacles such as fences and parked cars. With increasing elevation, the complexity increases and so does the skill level to fly such a vehicle. In the US, any vehicle that is flown above 15 feet requires a pilot's license. Hovering is more energy intensive mode of travel than using fixed wing lift. Ideally, an aircraft should use propellers for taking off and landing and should use lift force from fixed wings for traversing horizontally. Today, it is much easier to create a volunteer compared to the 1970s. In fact, several volunteers are cropping up around the world. These include the EANG 184 passenger drone, hover bikes like the Scorpion, and unmanned air taxis. The volunteers of today do not use an engine but use a motor instead which is lighter. Secondly, they have a battery pack. The energy inside the battery pack determines the range. As the battery technology is becoming lighter and can hold more charge, the possibility of electric aviation is opening up. In fact, an airline has already announced electric flights between London and Paris by the year 2027. Electric flights have the potential to be carbon emission free and also have the advantage of constant weight rather than wearing weight as experienced by an aircraft running on fuel. In a conventional fixed wing aircraft like the Boeing or an Airbus, sometimes it is not possible to land immediately after takeoff. The reason is the limit on the landing weight, which can be at times lower than the takeoff weight. When the aircraft lands, there are huge stresses on the wheels and the landing gear, and therefore for landing, the weight of an aircraft must be below a certain threshold. The aircraft has to shed this weight before it lands. The weight is shed by burning fuel. So what is the engineering principle to take away from this video? Well, if you're in a helicopter and running out of fuel, you should travel closer to the ground if possible to traverse the most distance, making use of the ground effect. And what is the physics that we can further learn? 
Here is a simple formula for calculating the thrust force. The thrust force F is equal to M times C2 minus C1, where C2 minus C1 represents the difference of velocities between the inlet and the outlet of the ducted propeller or the jet engine, and M represents the mass flow rate or how many kg of air per second is being sucked by the propeller or jet. So this formula is very simple to calculate the thrust. The thrust force must be equal to the weight of the aircraft to maintain its altitude while hovering. The thrust force must be higher than the weight of the aircraft for climbing. Note that the force is directly proportional to the mass flow rate. The mass flow rate is directly proportional to the density of air and the density of air also reduces with altitude and therefore as the aircraft climbs up, further thrust is lost. So to sum it up again, when the aircraft climbs, the thrust is lost because of the absence of ground effect and also because of the reduction in air density. More energy is required to fly at higher altitudes than flying close to the ground. With the tech available today, we can create the bat-like aircraft, but it would not be able to fly at higher than a few meters in altitude and would be very unstable because of its design. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have learned from it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Do subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Thank you for your attention.